Okay, this is section 1-4 and it's on counting techniques. And the first thing we start off with is the fundamental theorem of counting. And it says if events are independent, then the number of outcomes from these two events equals the product of the individual events. For example, how many outfits can be put together if a person owns three shirts, two pair of pants, and one tie? And the tie is optional. Now, we're assuming that they all match. In other words, these three shirts are fine to wear with either one of these two pair of pants and the tie is is fine with with any of these three shirts or these two pair of pants that's what makes them independent of each other if only one pair of these pants are good with one of these shirts then they're not independent of each other and it would be more of a conditional problem type of thing but with this when they're independent of each other right here where it says product means that we just have to multiply these together. So there's three options for the shirt, and that's where the three comes from. Two pair of pants, that's where the two comes from. And the tie, there's two options as well. You, The tie is optional, so you can either wear the tie or not wear the tie. So that's why you have two options for the tie. Then multiply these together and you get 12. So there's 12 possible uh, arrangements that you could have of wearing you know, shirt A, B, or C, pants A or B and tie A or not at all and you could you could diagram all this like shirt A pants A tie A or shirt A pants B tie A you know and list all these and you would find that there are 12 different arrangements of these uh, same way if you say uh, a, a radio station has to have at least three letters but no more than four well, the letters options are 26 because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. But if a fourth letter is optional, that gives you a 27th choice. You could have any letter from A to Z giving you 26 choices or no letter at all, which is 27th choice. Just like if there was two ties here and the tie was optional, you would actually have three choices. Tie A, tie B, or no tie at all. So that's a thing to watch out for there when something is optional, it gives you an extra choice. Okay, on the next one it says, how many ways could you rank 10 people from highest to lowest? Well, or just arrange 10 people in a row or whatever. Well, you have 10 options for the first person, 9 options for the second person because the first person has already been, been put in the front of the line. Then the next person, there's 9 options here because of the 9 remaining people. After that person is set in position, then you have 8 people remaining. Now we've taken Kintera taken care of the one drop off in the number of people that we have. Just like when there was four kings and you select one out, now you only have three kings. You only have 51 cards in a deck after you the one card has been going on. Then if you do that again, it would drop to two out of 50. Well, this is the same type of thing. You have one person, so you have 10 choices. Then once that person is there, you have nine choices, then eight choices. Just like uh, the digits on a, uh, uh, a, a, a phone number. There are 10 choices choices for the first digit and if the digit can repeat then there's 10 digits again for the next if they can't repeat there's only nine digits possible 10 digits meaning 0 through 9 there's 10 choices well this is with people so it'd be 10 times 9 times 8 all the way down to, to 1 and that's this big number here like 3 billion sorry 3 million 628 thousand eight hundred but you can multiply numbers together from any number down to 1 by using the factorial key either on the calculator or on the Excel sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and start using the Excel sheet right now and show you how to use it. When you open up the Excel sheet, and I'll open that up right now, you'll see different sheets. Like the very first sheet uh, is one that I don't have showing right now, which is just instructions. Let me see if I can uh, scroll to the left to get um, the instruction area here showing up. So here, this is what it looks like when you open the Excel sheet. And this is just the instruction sheet. It's worth reading it. You can type in the white cells and so on. But the sheet that is the first sheet that we use is the binomial sheet. Now, the very first section that we use on the binomial sheet is this right here where it says combinations, permutations, hypergeometric. So this does a lot of stuff from section 1.3 and 1.4, by the way. So... Um, uh, actually, 1, 4 is where it does most of it in this area. And factorials are done right here. So if I want to get what is 10 times 9 times 8 all the way down to times 1, I just type in 10 right here. And when I hit enter, here's my answer right below. 
you see it's 3,628,800, which is exactly what we had on the Excel sheet. So that's where you do factorials. In a bit, you'll see combinations and permutations, and we'll do those right here. And then later on in the section, you have hypergeometric combinations, hypergeometric permutations, and distinguishable permutations. So that's all in this one area right here. So let's go on uh, in the uh, textbook here. So that's showing you the 10 factorial where you do that. And then now permutations and combinations. That's not where you're taking everybody and arranging them. You're taking a group of people. So permutations is when order matters. For example, your lock or combination, if your combination to your lock was, let's say, 31, 13, 10, then it matters what order you put it in. If it's 31, 13, 10, and you put in 10, 13, 31, it won't open. You have to put it in the correct order. So your lock or combination should have really been called a lock or permutation. That's when order matters. Now, a, lock, a combination is, is when order doesn't matter. Like, for example, I want to pick three people out of ten people. I don't, there's no ranking. There's no position for the three people. So that would be a combination. I want to put three items on my sandwich, like ketchup, mustard, and pickle. I don't care what order they go on the sandwich. So that's a combination. Permutation would be, oh, I'm selecting a president, a vice president, and a treasurer. Well, it matters uh, because there's different positions on that, so that would be a permutation. So here's this first one. This one says, how many different ways can a vice president, president, and treasurer be selected from a group of seven people? Well, here's your N, your number of people, seven people. The order matters because, let's say, if Tom is vice president, Mary's president, and Jane's treasurer, that's different than if Jane was president and the other two were the other position. So order matters on this one. And when order matters, it's a permutation. So we can do this right on the Excel sheet, which most people will do. And we have to put in our N and our X. The N is the number of people that we're choosing from. We're choosing from seven people. And how many positions do we need to fill? Three. That would be the X. So on the Excel sheet, we just put here in permutations, we'll put the seven in for the N and the three in for X and you get your 210. Now, just thinking this problem through, all you really need to do is say, well, how many choices, let me get rid of this stuff, how many choices did I have for the uh, first person to, uh, you know, for, let's say, president? Well, I had seven choices. Then after that person selected, how many people did I have to choose from to be vice president? Well, that's six. And then after that, how many people did I have to choose from to be treasurer? Well, that would be 5. And if you multiply these together, that will give you, right here is 30, and 30 times 7 is 210. And you can see that that is exactly the same answer we got when we used Excel. So whether you do it by hand or you do it uh, right here on uh, Excel, you get the same answer. And the formula for it is uh, right here on the textbook. Let me go back to the textbook. And you can see uh, that it's n factorial over n minus x factorial. So in this problem, that would be 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial. Well, you could do that in pieces if you wanted to, and you would get the same answer. OK. Um, so there's the thinking it through. And here it is doing it by hand. It would be 7 factorial over 4 factorial, see 7 minus 3 factorial, and 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial, meaning all the way down. The reason I stopped at 4 factorial is because there's a 4 factorial on the bottom. They cross off, and you're just left with the 7 times 6 times 5 or the 210. So I think thinking it through is fine, or the Excel sheet, or the formula if you wanted to. Now this one, how many ways can three people be selected from seven people? Notice there's no job specific type of things given here. So for this, this order doesn't matter. And when order doesn't matter, it's a combination. See, again, your locker combination should have been called a locker permutation because order matters. When order doesn't matter, it's a combination. See, if I take Tom and uh, Mary and whoever the other person is, Tom, Mary, and Mark, it's no different than Mark, Mary, Tom. Uh, order doesn't matter. And when order doesn't matter again, it is a combination. So for this problem, we would just be using the combinations section of the Excel sheet, and the N would be 7, and the X would be 3. And I'll go ahead and do that. So for this, we'll just be doing the problem right here. Seven things taken three at a time in the combination area, and you see that's only 35. 
Now, why is this less? Well, with this being less, it's saying that um, things like, for example, right here, when you had, let's do three people, let's say John, Mark, and Harry. Well, that is listed this way, and uh, if you're saying a specific order, then Harry, Mark, John is different because they had particular positions. Okay, like John was president, vice president, and here's treasurer for Harry. Here, Harry's president, Mark is vice president, and John is treasurer. So what you uh, what we need to do is, if order doesn't matter, we have to think how many arrangements of these three letters could there be? Well. The first letter could be any one of three letters, either the J, M, or H. The next letter could be any one of two, and the next one is fixed to be that one. So there's six arrangements of these right there. And if you would take the 210 that we had on the previous problem and divide it by six, you would get the 35. And that's what's going on with this problem. It's so much easier to do it on the Excel sheet, you can see. But that's where there's an extra division that's uh, involved in this calculation if you do it by hand. So uh, right here, you can see when there's combinations, you have to divide by an extra x factorial. That's that 3 factorial that we had on this problem. So the main thing you need to do is see, does order matter or order not matter when you're working these out? And here I have the, the, it all written out with the A, B's, and C's, like for the seven people. So I went A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way up through G, and listed all the 210 possibilities for those uh, seven people. And these are all the three ways you could select it. Here, the original 210 was where order... Uh, uh, mattered. See, where order matters. You know, vice president, president, treasurer type of thing. ABC is listed and so is ACB, so is BAC, BCA, CAB, CBA. These six would actually only be one when we list the only the 35 different ways when it's combinations. And so here's the 35 unique ways where order uh, didn't matter. And um, Here's the same problem worked out with the combinations. You can see it's 7 factorial over 3 factorial. That's your x factorial over n minus x factorial, 7 minus 3 factorial. And that gives you, like we had before, the 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 3 factorial, 4 factorial. The 4 factorials cross off. The 3 factorial is your 6. And when you divide, you get 35 like we showed before. So that's how you do this, uh, this particular area. And we'll continue on with the next video.